In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use a truth functional expansion to create a finite extensional model to show that the following argument is invalid. So please pause the video now and try and expand both premises and the conclusion using the truth functional method uh, that you can find in the lecture video. And I will essentially just copy and paste my solution in. So pause it now, and then you'll be able to compare your results to mine. And the emphasis of this video will be actually to use that truth functional expansion to construct a model. Here's the solution to the truth functional expansion. I hope you see that it actually matches up with what you got. That would be the best. And if not, you might have just made some sort of minor mechanical error here in terms of the sort of order of expansion. Things to look out for. Importantly, in premise two, I kept the negation as the main connective. And importantly, in premise one, I only expanded what was under the universal, so I didn't re-expand the F0, and little things like that. Now for my video, you'll realize that I created this table here, which represents all the possibilities of whether or not things are in predicates. And my goal here is to show this is invalid by creating an extensional model, a finite extensional model. So my universe of discourse is 0, 1. Now that would be stipulated in the question on a test or something. Whenever you have truth functional expansion, I will stipulate that the model should only have a universe of discourse of two elements. At this point, what I need to do is figure out what's in F, the F1 predicate, what's in the h1 ped predicate and what's in the g2 predicate and to decide this i just have to th figure out what's actually in these things now the nice thing about doing this is it, you just sort of go back and forth based off of your table but you, you essentially just do what the easiest things to do are in the expansion here okay so here are some examples of what i mean if i look at the first premise the first premise is this line down here this is a disjunction, okay? So for a disjunction to be true, I only need one side to be true. Which side do you want? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's perfectly arbitrary. So what I'm going to insist is this left side is all true. Now the nice thing about this left side, uh, and the right side in fact, is that they're just conjunctions. So if this has to be true, then each conjunct must be true. So that means F0 must be true g00 must be true, and g01 must be true. And that's what I know from here. Now, so what you can sort of see is I'm actually going to be doing a shortened truth table here. And so here's an example. If this premise 2 has to be true, oh, I, I didn't state this. I, I'm assuming this is obvious at this point. But why does premise 1 and premise 2 have to be true? Because I'm showing invalidity. And for invalidity, the premises all need to be true, and the conclusion needs to be false. Okay, so that's why I'm setting premise 2 to be true. But if I want this to be true, that means the main connective on the inside has to be false. And so this is nice because now the disjunction is false. Now when I look in here, making these this disjunction false is actually pretty easy as well. Notice that to, for the disjunction to be false, both sides need to be false. I just have to sort of pick what to make false. But if you look at this, all of this, this is sort of uh, interesting because they're all conjunctions. So to make this false, I just need to ensure that at least one of them is false. Well, from the left side here, G00 is true already, and G01 is also true already. So I have no choice. The H0 must be false. And so that takes care of this. That's really nice. But over here, what do I do? Well, I'm actually not so sure because I have choice. And so here I have choice. I can let this be false, this be false, or this be false, or I could let all of them be false. So when there's choice, you know, from shortened truth tables, you might as well just sit back and wait and, and sort of see what happens. Okay, so now let's look at the conclusion. Again, I want this to be false. So for this to be false, I need at least one side to be false. But look over here, H0 is false already. And if the antecedent is false, that means the, the conditional is true. So somehow I need this to be false. And for this to be false, we know it's false in only one way, when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So that means H1 is true. And the consequent here, negation G11, is false, which of course means G11 is true, right? Because that has to be false, which means that has to be true. Uh, and that's true. Okay, so now I can go back over here and figure out what I actually need. H1 is true, true. Uh, turns out G11 is true, 
So that means the thing I really need is G10, and that must be false. And so that's how I would satisfy my entire system here. Now, a lot of the times in more complicated questions, when you make a change somewhere, you have to make sure you didn't screw up a change somewhere else. This is just like shortened truth tables, no, no weirdness there. Uh, so in this case, though, it turns out everything was preserved nicely because we were m working with premise 2 and conclusion at the exact same time. So now that we've done this shortened truth table and I've marked up my, my sort of solution here, the trick is to move your solution to an actual model, which is this thing here on the right. The way you do that is anything that's true, you put into your model. Anything that's false, you don't put in. And I advise that anything that's blank, you also don't put in. So just to finish this, F just has zero in it. H does not have zero, but does have one in it and you close the set brackets, and G has 0, 0, and 0, 1, and 1, 1. And that's how we finish. Now notice in this, I'm actually using set theoretic notation, so I'm doing the correct usage of commas. Make sure you know your set theoretic notation, and you use commas to separate the order pairs properly. Okay, so that's how we do it. Truth functional expansion, shorten truth table essentially, and then move it out to a model, universe of discourse 0 and 1, and we have now shown that under this model, this argument is invalid because this model renders both premises true and the conclusion false.